Continuing in the book of Ruth, we're moving along now. I believe we might get finished with chapter 2 today. So, uh, Ruth chapter 2, beginning with verse 15. Ruth chapter 2, beginning with verse 15. Ruth chapter 2, beginning with verse uh, 15. Where is Eric? There's Eric right there. Raise your hand just a minute, Eric. I think everybody knows Eric Smith. Uh, I don't know if he told you or not, but uh, he got a raise uh, this past week, and uh, he told me about it. It was kind of interesting uh, how it how it all took place. And, Eric told me that he walked into his supervisor's office and said, Sir, I'll be straight with you. I know the economy isn't great, uh, but I want you to know I've got three companies that are after me, and I'd like to respectfully ask for a raise. And after a few minutes of haggling there, the supervisor finally agreed to give Eric a 5% raise. And then Eric happily gets up to leave, you know, and the supervisor stops me. He says, By the way, uh, just a minute, uh, which three companies are after you? And Eric replied, the electric company, the phone company. <laughs> Ruth chapter 2. We uh, last left Boaz and Ruth enjoying a lunch date together, as you recall, in chapter 2 of verse 14. And there are other workers around, of course, and uh, by the way, uh, teenagers and parents, we can already learn a lesson. It's better and safer to be in groups as you get to meet someone of the opposite uh, sex. Uh, dating groups, if you must date at all. Ruth has spent the day working in the fields of Boaz. He's taken notice of her and he has promised her that he will take care of her if she will abide in his fields with his maids, his young uh, female workers. Today, Ruth uh, we'll be going to see Naomi. And we will see Naomi's response to this rich single relative named Boaz and his kindness to Ruth. Remember, Ruth was a poor widow. And she just happened to tell Naomi that morning, I'm going out to, to get us some food. I'm going to see if I can find a field that I can work in. Remember, they're both widows. Naomi, the mother-in-law, and Ruth, uh, the daughter-in-law. Both of their husbands have died. And we will finish chapter 2, as I said. There will be many life lessons, not really a general topic today, but just a lot of life lessons. So I feel like the Lord has something for everybody here this morning. So Ruth chapter 2, beginning with verse 15, and we'll read through the end of the chapter. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, say, Let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach or insult her not. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them, that she may glean them and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the feet until evening, and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about an evening of bark. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wallest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law, with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought her work today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who had not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, the man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabite said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep past by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other people. In verse 23, So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwell with her mother-in-law. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, we've come to the time, Lord, which we are reading, studying, gleaning your holy word. Father, I pray, Lord, that uh, you would help this 
word to penetrate the hearts of the people that are assembled here today. Lord, I realize I preach to myself as much as I preach to anyone else here. So Lord, just bless your word, uh, Lord, and in just a little while, might we respond in a way that would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The best way to examine and study this section is to look at it verse by verse. So I want you for a few minutes to sort of picture it in your mind now as though you were present, you're on the scene, and you're a part of this unfolding drama, this unfolding story. Well, where does it take place? Remember, we're in the farm fields near Bethlehem. And perhaps this lunch has just taken place under some shade tree or, or something like that. They don't have quite the setup that they have down the snake branch, I don't believe. He's not even down there for lunch. But uh, probably under a shade tree of some sort. Who? Well, if we have the young widow Ruth, we have Boaz, and we have his workers that are around. Well, when did this take place? Approximately 3,000 years ago, although it seems as though this event could have happened yesterday. There's nothing in the story that seems too far-fetched for us. So let's uh, look at it now, verse by verse, starting with verse 15. Notice Ruth gets up from the lunch table to get back to work, and suddenly the supervisor, the landowner, the handsome, rich, single man named Boaz has a word for his male workers right in front of Ruth. He tells his workers, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not insult her. What is Boaz saying there in that verse? See, this is more what he is telling his workers to do is even more generous than what the law required in Leviticus chapter 19 to let the poor gather because Boaz added the qualifier among among the effect being that Ruth had greater access there than one could by toiling along after the workers and harvesting uh, a little bit that I've been able to read and understand. The, root, the reapers would first come, they would cut the barley stalks by the handful, then there'd be others that followed them and they would bundle them together, eight to ten uh, handfuls into sheets. And normally only after the sheaves had been loaded up and carted away could the poor then come in and gather. But uh, Boaz is allowing Ruth to come in among his harvesters and instructs them not to find every handful, but to even leave some loose for her there in the field. The actions of Boaz seem to indicate that he's taking more than a passing interest in Ruth. You see, Boaz now is not only interested in Ruth, he is now involved. He has opened his hands. He has opened his heart unto Ruth. But you know, Boaz is a picture of our Heavenly Father this morning. The Father's hands are open to death. His heart is willing, and He is wanting to help you no matter what you have going on today. Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. This morning, right where you sit at Healing Springs Baptist Church, maybe you need help making a difficult decision. Well, I would say unto you, lift up thine eyes unto the hills from where your help comes from, the Lord, because He made the heaven and the earth. You may need healing this morning. I say unto you, lift up your eyes unto the hills. Your help comes from the Lord. You may be depressed today. You may be feeling lonely today. You may be feeling overworked and tired and weary today. I say to you, lift up your eyes unto the hills. Your help comes from the Lord. Perhaps right where you are, you need help with an addiction. You need help with some habit that you have. I say to you, lift up your eyes unto the hills. Your help comes from the Lord. You may need help with your anger today. You may need help with your jealousy, with your guilt, with your doubt. Lift up your eyes unto the hills. Your help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. In verse 15, Boaz tells his young male workers to let Ruth come and glean without any of you giving her any problems whatsoever. Let's look at verse 16 now. Verse 16. Boaz doesn't just stop with that. He continues on saying, I want, to pull, I want you to pull out some of the grain from the bundles and leave it so that she may glean. In other words, he's saying, spill some of the good grain you're harvesting right in her path, fellas. That's what he's saying. 
You know, the workers could have protested this. They could have said, this isn't faithful, what we're having to do for this lady. But you know, grace is never faithful. Grace is unmerited, undeserved, unearned faith. God is dropping buckets and truckloads of good things upon us. I wonder this morning, did you come in here, Mount Nourish, living on spiritual scraps today? Did you come in living on spiritual scraps? Well, I want you to know, like Boaz, God wants to load your wagon this morning. He wants to load your wagon full of victory in life. He wants to load your wagon full of power in life. He wants to load your wagon full of blessings in life. He does. But I want you to know this morning, unlike some preachers that may preach on television and so forth, this load up of your wagon is not for the lazy. Just as Ruth had to go to the field of grace each day, so must you and I pay the price in time in prayer. You and I must pay the price in time in His holy word, communing with Him each and every day. Yes, there are chests full of treasures. There are chests full of blessings. So much so that God wants to load your wagon this morning so that when you leave out of here, you'll be hardly can pull it. It'll be so heavy. But you must first spend time with your Lord. He will not bless the lazy. You must spend time with Him. If you are not where you want to be spiritually today, you cannot blame those around you. Don't blame your spouse this morning if you fail to pray as much as you should have this past week. Don't blame your children this morning if you didn't read a chapter of the Bible every day this past week. Why? Because you're responsible for your own self. You're responsible for digging on your own into the Scriptures. You're responsible for going to God's Word and communing with Him personally each and every day. You are. You are. I am and so are you. But I want you to know, if you will do that, and we talked about this Wednesday night, spending time with Christ, a daily appointment with Him, spending time living in His Word, spending time praying in faith, spending time fellowshipping with believers, spending time witnessing for Him, spending time serving others, I promise you on the authority of this book right here, we call the Holy Bible, God's Holy Word, that He can and He will bring such a harvest in your life that you will be unable to gather it all if you will submit to Him and stay in His feet of grace just as Boaz has instructed Ruth to do. And we could spend a lot of time on any of these. In fact, I felt like when I was preparing, we could have prepared a message for each one of these verses. But we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on to verse 17 now. Ruth arises from the lunch table and begins to glean and gather until evening. Can you picture her uh, this morning in your mind? Kind of the song that we just sang, although the song wasn't then, but bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And she's working, this hard-working lady, working in those fields, gathering, barley, so forth. She's working, bringing in the sheaves. Sing it with me. Bringing in the sheaves, Bring in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bring in the sheaves. And that's what that lady did. She's working hard. She's gathering. She's gleaning in the field there. Bringing in the sheaves. She was. She was. A stick or a rock was used to beat the stalks to separate the grain from chaff. So she ended up, we're told, with about an ephah of barley. In the days that God provided manna, we're told in Exodus chapter 16 that one homer was satisfactory for a man per day. One homer was satisfactory for a man per day. And ephah equal ten homers. So Ruth has gathered enough in this one day to feed Naomi and herself for about five to ten days during this time. Not bad at all for a day's work in verse 17. Verse 18 now. No doubt Ruth thinks... The end of the day is drawing me. Let me return to Naomi so that I may show her what I have gleaned. And I can tell her about what all has transpired today. So we see her return to Naomi. 
And the Bible says she took out and she gave to Naomi what she had left after she was satisfied. The King James says she brought forth and gave to her what she had reserved after she was sufficed. What does that mean? If any of you have ever gone to like a Fats Cafe, Ruby Tuesday, uh, Colby's for Japanese, like some of the girls went the other night, Secure, wherever you go, and they'll bring you so much on a plate you're unable to finish it all. Any of y'all ever been like that? Well, that's, that's what this was. You remember Ruth has had lunch with Boaz, and there was so much there, Ruth couldn't finish it all, so she bought a doggy bag home for Naomi to eat as well. That's, that's what this verse is basically saying. So Ruth is sharing her blessings. I wonder this morning, when it comes to sharing your blessings, do you do it? If you've got a singing voice, do you share it as Christy did this morning? Do you share your resources? your talents, whatever God has gifted you with, uh, whether it's money, gifts, whatever it might be that you have, do you share it with others or do you keep it to yourself? God wants us to share our blessings with others. He does. As Ruth did. Verse 19 now. Look at verse 19. Ruth walks in with all that brain and Naomi says, Wow! Where have you gleaned today? Naomi was astonished by the large quantity that Ruth was able to gather in just a day. And Naomi asked, where have you gleaned today? You know, in the previous generation, this was a question that was frequently asked among Christians. Where have you gleaned today? Every day, you and I should ask ourselves, what improvements have I made for the kingdom of heaven today? Where did I gather sheaves by teaching and witnessing of Christ? What have I learned or done for the Lord today? Where have I gleaned today? Do you know the problem with most of us is that we're too busy with the allurements. We're too busy with the enjoyments of Moab that we're not wondering and working to glean for the Lord. You know, this morning, very often we can talk more readily about the latest movie that we've seen than we can about Bible verses that we've memorized, can't we? And you know today, we can talk more easily about TV shows and upcoming football games than we can about the Lord, amen? Am I right about that? I know I'm right about that. I strongly believe that you and I should make a sign similar to this. Where have I gleaned today? Make a sign and take that sign on your dresser to evaluate your day before going to bed. Put this question on the seat of your car so that you see it everywhere you go. Write this question on your notebook at school. Ask your spouse each day, where have you gleaned today? Greet fellow Christians as they used to do. Where have you gleaned today? Where have you gleaned today? I wonder about you this morning. Where have you gleaned? Do people look at your life out in the world and they say, Wow, where did you glean today? He surely is bringing in the sheaves there. Or she sure is working hard for the Lord bringing in sheaves right there. Do you see her? Are you inviting people to church? Are you inviting people to come to know the Lord? Or do you keep continue on your way doing little and caring little for of Christ's command to go into the world and to make disciples? Stop and ask yourself right now, will anybody be in heaven when you get there? Because you personally witnessed them. You personally shared the Roman road. And you personally shared John 3.16 with them. And they received Christ right there. Will anybody be in heaven when you get there? Because they came across your path. And you got, you gleaned, you shared the word of the Lord. Or will there be nobody there because of your life? I wonder. Each night, before you lay your head on the pillow, before you close your eyes, why not ponder this question? Where have I gleaned today? What have I done for the Lord today? Where have I helped in this world that we live today? Where have I gleaned today? Where have I gleaned today? Verse 20 now. Naomi sees the abundance. And Ruth tells her, that she had worked in the field belonging to Boaz. Naomi is excited and says, Blessed be the servant of the Lord. Is this the same Naomi that we saw in the, before that was bitter? Remember she came into Bethlehem?
with him from Moab with Ruth. And whenever she arrived, she said, Call me Mara. Call me bitter. The Lord has dealt bitterly with me. She went on to say, The Lord has afflicted me. She said that she left full and she has come home empty. Is what she said at the end of chapter 1. you remember all of that? Naomi was a defeated, discouraged woman. But now she is restored. Bitterness has been turned into blessing. Unbelief has been turned into faith. Despair has been turned into hope. Emptiness has been turned into fullness. Changes have taken place in Naomi's life because of what Ruth did. God used Ruth to change Naomi. Naomi is able to see that all of this that has taken place was not just happenstance. It was not just by chance. It was not just by love. It was the hand of Almighty God that brought this to be. She's finally able to see some of this. As Christians, you and I need to recognize that things in life are not by chance. <coughs> but by faith we can say it was the hand of God that did that. Ruth was led to this field to come face to face with the one man that God had chosen to redeem and marry her. It was by divine appointment. Ruth and Naomi, once living in despair, unsure, uncertain of the future, now see God at work. Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6 says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Some of you out there this morning may be saying, you may be thinking, can God do the same for me as He did for Ruth? Is my Boaz, some of you ladies may be thinking, is my Boaz out there some way? Some of you men may be thinking, is my Ruth somewhere out there busy working in the fields waiting on me? Absolutely, she is. You see, you don't have to strive. You don't have to engineer. You don't have to manipulate to find the man or woman that God has picked for you. You just be about your daily business like Ruth was, and you will find him or her. Verses 21 through 23 now. I want to point out one more thing before we close this chapter. We're almost through. Harvest time was a time of celebration for the youth. It's party time. That's what they're thinking. Uh, this harvest time is time to party and have a good time. Turn back to chapter 2, verse 8 for just a second. I want you to notice something in this verse. Chapter 2, verse 8. <coughs> At the end of verse 8, Boaz is talking to Ruth. And he tells her, abide here fast by my maidens. Or either he's saying here, stay here with these young ladies. Stay right here with these young ladies. Now flip back to where we just were, verse 21. I want you to notice what Ruth says that Boaz told her. Chapter 2, verse 21. And Ruth the Moabite said, but he said, or Boaz said unto me, thou shalt keep fast or stay here my young men. That's not what Boaz had told her. <laughs> She said that uh, Boaz told her to stay near the, near the young men. Boaz had told her to stay near the young ladies. Now come on now, Ruth. Don't let your Moabite past creep back up. You've come too far. You've come too far from Moab to get back in that. You need to stay near the girls. That's what Boaz told her to do. She told her aunt Naomi that Boaz had told her to stay with the fellas. Of course, uh, Boaz hadn't said that. Being a young woman... Perhaps Ruth during this party would have loved to have stayed with the fellas uh, during that time. Being single, she's probably ready and anxious to get married again and so forth. So she tells Naomi, oh, Boaz told me to stay with the fellas. That's what she said. But notice what Naomi replies to her in verse 22. She said, it's good, my daughter. And of course, this is her daughter-in-law. That thou go out with this maidens, the young ladies, not the men. She says, it's good if you go with the girls. So what does verse 23 tell us that Ruth ultimately does? She kept fast or stayed with who? The girls. The girls. She stayed with the maids. She listened to the counsel of her elders. Ruth was wise enough to listen. In the scriptures, you know, there's a link between young and old. Elders and youth. Young people have seen, but often lack knowledge. Older people have knowledge, but often lack vision or energy. But the two are needed together. Moses was with Joshua. Elijah with Elisha. We have Eli with Samuel. There's several examples of that in the Bible. There's a need for young and old, vision and wisdom, energy and experience to work together. 
And I'm so thankful as I scan my eyes across the congregation of Healing Springs Baptist Church that God has blessed us with a variety of ages, a variety of backgrounds. Why? Because we need each other, folks. We need each other. We do. We do. What is next for Ruth? What is next for Boaz? What other wise counsel will that be give to Ruth? Well, we'll have to wait and find out next time. But as we prepare for the invitation this morning, we've covered many life lessons, as I said we would. We've covered things from you teenagers dating in groups, to uh, God being a help in our time of need, to the way that God has blessed us here with a variety of young, old, in between. What life lesson has God taught you or reminded you of this morning? I said at the beginning, there is likely something for everybody here. Is there trouble in your life? Do you need to look at those hills and to the Lord, knowing only He can help you? You come this morning. Did you come in today living off of spiritual scraps? As I said earlier, God wants to give you an abundance. He wants to fill your wagon this morning. Won't you submit to Him and His grace today, and you'll leave here pulling out a wagon. Pulling away. You came in with just a bucket of scraps and you'll leave with the way. As Ruth shared her blessings, I wonder this morning, do you share yours? As you think about your gifts, your talents, your resources, are you sharing them with others or are you keeping them to yourself? Where have you been gleaning, I wonder, or have you not been gleaning at all? Won't you commit this morning to make a difference in this world? What Ruth did and how God blessed her made a difference in Naomi's life. Naomi went from being defeated and discouraged to having hope and faith. You may need to do that with somebody that's in your life. Ask yourself, where have I been this past week? If no way, you come and dedicate your life this morning to be a gleaner, a gatherer, a worker for the Lord. As you think about this church, we need each other. It's not about how old we are or uh, what our past was. It's about loving, coming beside each other, Carrying the gospel out. That's our mission. To serve the community that we're in. I wonder about you. Are you doing that today? Are you doing your part for the church? Are you loving the people of this church? Are you carrying the banner of Christ? Are you gleaning in the fields? Are you gleaning in the fields today? Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, we've come to the invitation, Lord. And Lord, this is an invitation that's being extended, Lord, from me, Lord, in a sense, on your behalf as your representative. But Lord, this invitation is for the people. Lord, this is a time for folks to respond to your word, either privately or publicly. Lord, I don't know what's going on in each person's life here today, but Lord, you do. You're all seeing eye as it looks upon this congregation, looks beyond the skin and bones. And looks into the very heart and mind of us, Lord. Lord, you, you see all and you know all. And Lord, you know what decisions need to be made here today, Lord. Whether it's commitment, whether it's salvation, rededication, whatever decision needs to be made. Oh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you help these folks to make them today. Might be a man, might be a woman, might be a family that rededicates their home to you. Whatever the needs are, whatever decisions need to be made. Woo, draw, encourage, Lord, strengthen, and Lord, help us that when we walk out of here, it's your desire that we be pulling away, not walking out with a small plate of scraps and left others. Lord, your word is for us daily to replenish us, to guide us, to help us. Lord, as your people, might we stay in your word, stay close to you and pray. And consider it all important to fellowship with believers. And then to carry what we learn here and what we learn in your word and share it with others so that we might serve them. And as Seth said earlier, so that folks don't go to hell. Lord, help us to commit to be gatherers, to be believers, harder workers than what we've been for you. As Ruth has set the example for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.